Welcome to today's reflective act of worship from Newcastle Cathedral. We hope you will find it helpful as we gather today, from many different places, yet one in faith and hope. As God's people we have gathered. Let us worship God together. Wherever you may be, try to find a still place. A safe place. A place where you can take a moment to pause in body, mind and spirit. Remember that there are many others, both near and far away, pausing and praying with you in this moment too. Let us pray. Faithful one, whose word is life, Come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer, and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Having stilled and prepared ourselves to hear God's word for us, let us listen to the Gospel reading appointed for today. The Gospel according to Mark. Chapter 7, verses 14 to 23. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. When he had left the crowd and entered the house, his disciple asked him about the parable. He said to them, Then do you also fail to understand? Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile? Since it enters not the heart but the stomach and goes out into the sewer. Thus he declared all foods clean. And he said, It is what comes out of a person that defiles, for it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come, fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly, all these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. Remembering that the word of God is living and active. Let us now reflect on what God might be saying to us today through this passage of scripture. Today's reflection is offered by Catherine Govier, a reader at the Cathedral. Food is more than just fuel for the body. It's part of our identity too. Regional and national speciality dishes may have come into being simply because of what produce and cooking methods were available locally, but such food is often what we long for when we're far away from home. It's part of our culture, of who we are, and affirms that we are part of our community. And there are often religious requirements around what we eat, or more often don't eat, and this forms the background to today's reading. Jesus refers rather obliquely to what goes into the body rather than directly to food. As well he might, because there were huge sensitivities here for the people he was speaking to. Some of the Jewish people had quite recently been prepared to die rather than eat food forbidden and called unclean according to their laws. In the books of the Maccabees, which cover that period of history when the Jewish people became part first of the Greek and then of the Roman Empire, we read of people being martyred, of going to their death rather than eat swine flesh and they were recognised as heroes of the faith. It might seem strange to us 
but it was part of their identity as God's people, what they would eat and what they would refuse to eat even if they were starving. Being clean or being defiled in this sense is not a physical thing, but to do with whether someone was in a right relationship with God. And keeping the laws was about being faithful to God, even in the most difficult circumstances. As is often the case, the writer then reports a private conversation between Jesus and his disciples when he explains a little bit more. And this is where we get the explicit reference to food and Jesus declaring all foods clean. Although this phrase might be a later addition to the text, given as a convenient answer to all those debates in the early church as to whether Christians were bound to keep all the Jewish food laws in order to be part of the people of God. I don't think Jesus intends what he says as a criticism of those who were prepared to die rather than to eat food that they thought was unclean, as they were doing this in order to be faithful to the, their God as they saw it. But Jesus is quite clear that nothing you put into your body from the outside is going to affect your relationship with God, although it might not do you much good physically. What does defile you and cut you off from God, he says, are attitudes of mind, what is in your heart, in your inmost being, pride, folly, avarice, deceit and all the rest of it. This is what can cut us off from God and also from the world as we try to use it for our own ends rather than respecting all within it as our equal. And an attitude of love and respect and faithfulness in our hearts is what will keep us clean and undefiled, part of God's people. It's not just about food, of course, although this is the example used in the reading, a common everyday example. But not being defiled is also not just a matter of what we think and feel inside ourselves. It has to be realised in what we say and do, perhaps including what we eat, if we are to use the gifts of creation wisely and with respect. What Jesus is talking about is the difference between the external religious observance and the faith and love for God that rises up from our hearts from deep within us. Eating the right food, going to the right places, associating with the right people, won't in themselves make us right with God. But they may help keep us on the right track. It's how we all learn to do what is right, and through this to grow into a right relationship with God and with all around us. It reminds us of who we are and what we are called to be. Then we can be truly clean, deep within ourselves, at one with God and with the world around us. Take a moment, press pause if you want, to reflect on what, if anything, struck you during today's reflection? Were there words of comfort? Were there words of challenge? And now, remembering that all are precious in God's sight, let us pray. Gracious God, help us, we pray today, when we cling to uncritical rules and outward signs and rituals to avoid inner truths and the real reality of our lives. Give us the strength and courage to go to difficult places, even within ourselves and our histories, to confront convictions we have accepted and stood by too easily, putting barriers between ourselves, other people 
and you and your magnificent and thoroughgoing love and understanding. Lord, have mercy. Gracious God, you know all of the secrets of our heart. Help us to open ourselves to you with honesty and transparency today. To hand over to you, to seek your grace and help with the things we bottle up and strive to keep hidden. The things we are ashamed of or just don't know where to turn with. Draw close and gather into your embrace those who have become embittered, all whose hearts have grown cold, all who today, for whatever reason, are cold and hard towards other people. Christ, have mercy. Gracious God, we pray today for all those whose lives are entangled with wrongdoing. For those who are lost and whose lives are defined by patterns, relationships, addictions they would not choose, but do not have the means or maybe the strength to extricate themselves from. That they and those they inadvertently harm and hurt in their own distress. May today know the gifts of your grace, of forgiveness and reconciliation. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, you have created the heavens and the earth and made us in your own image. Teach us to discern your hand in all your works and your likeness in all your children. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the Lord touch our hearts with his love and open our lives to his glory. And may his blessing be upon all people, this night and for evermore. Amen. Let us dwell in the peace and protection of God, this day and always. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. Now that we have entered lockdown three, our pattern of daily reflections has had to change once again. On Wednesdays, the short reflection and prayers will be offered in the context of a service of Choral Evensong, which you can follow here on YouTube at 5.45pm or watch at your convenience later. Reflections on the other weekdays will retain this format. We hope that you do continue to find them inspiring and helpful in your worship and prayer life.